Welcome in everyone to another edition of Argo Sports Insider. This is a program where we highlight all the fantastic things our student athletes are doing here at the University of West Florida. I'm your host, Will Kennedy. We are into spring, so that means we've got a ton of stuff to share with you on this edition. Baseball, softball, tennis, all very busy, and golf getting ready to host two tournaments right here in the Pensacola area. Let's start this program, this week's edition, out on the diamond where the University of West Florida baseball team had a busy week. Things started off with a game down at Blue Wahoo Stadium, only the second time Coach Mike Jeffcoat and company have ever played down by the bay. Wisconsin Whitewater was the opponent that first time around. They were the opponent this time as well. And the Argos had a heck of a game on a Wednesday night. This one would end up going to extra innings and the Argos would walk away with a 5-4 win. Josh Prezina hit two home runs in the game, including the game-tying two-run blast in the ninth inning. That would set up extra innings. The Argos would load the bases. Brady Browning drove in the game-winning run, but they had to hang on in the bottom of the ninth. They were the visiting team for this one, but they walk away with a midweek win and then look to take that momentum into a weekend series back in conference play in the GSC against Auburn Montgomery. Unfortunately, things kind of went off the rails in game one of a two-game set, a doubleheader on Saturday as the Argos just couldn't get the bats going and the pitching just couldn't get it done either. They lose 12 to four to open the series and you know that means you gotta bounce back. You gotta find a way to turn around in game two and get it done. They did just that. Cullen O'Shea had a big game in that one. True Fontenot, lots of players stepping in. Jaden Fryman hit a solo home run and the Argos flipped the score from game one to game two. They win 12 to four and that would set up a showdown on Sunday, an opportunity for the Argos to win another series and maintain their spot at the top of the GSC standings. They would do that in walk-off fashion on Sunday, winning two of three in the series. Trent Jeffcoat had a big day on Sunday with four hits. True Fontenot, who had been big late in the games on Saturday, stepped up and did it again on Sunday. Cullen O'Shea continued to rock. He had seven hits in the series, enough to power his way to the Gulf South Conference Player of the Week honors this week. And the Argos take two of three. They improved to 17 and 10 on the season, 12 and three in conference play. We caught up with Coach Jeff Coat after another series win. Gutsy performance by our team today. AUM has got a great ball club. I mean, they really swing the bats and put the ball in play and try to put pressure on you. And you know, the got to got to execute pitches. But uh, you know, we had we had guys up and down the lineup with big hits today. Obviously, the game winner by Trent Jeff Cut. I mean, he was four for five, but Colin O'Shea had a good day again, two for four, and Alden Davis, two for four, and uh, True Fontenot, big day, four for five down there in the bottom of the lineup with two RBIs and had the big hit to start us there in the bottom of the ninth. But, uh, you know, Dowdy gave us a solid outing, and uh, they put the balls in play and had some misfortunes there early that helped them get some runs. Wasn't necessarily Dowdy's fault, but uh, Wilkerson came in and did a phenomenal job. D-Law did a good job, you know, just had a tough break there and, you know, gave up that big hit for them to tie it. Uh, but our guys showed their mettle and they were determined to win that game in the bottom of the ninth. And we get a runner on, bunt him over. CJ did a good job doing that and they had to pick their poison between, you know, Trent and uh, O'Shea. So you can win on Sunday and win the series, it's huge. We're glad we were at home. I think it would have been a tough road to hoe up there with AUM this year, but uh, we can keep winning the series, that's the goal. And you know, we're talking about the guys that got the hits, but there was guys up and down the lineup that we asked to sacrifice bunt today, and every one of them executed it to move runners into scoring position to allow those other guys to drive in runs. So there was a lot of selflessness on the team today. We were executing a small game, and that's what you got to do in these big games like this to try to win the series. So, you know, a lot of unsung heroes in that lineup, and they were working together today. Uh, we're trying to work it where we get some offense in there and then made some defensive moves and get our defensive guys in there late and um, you know it worked out today. We're going to be uh, tested on the road at Montevallo next week Friday Saturday and then go on the road to North Georgia the following week midweek so yeah we're going to leave the spoon and now we're going to get tested down the stretch run and uh, you know games like this I think are going to make us strong. We played a lot of one run games and you know a lot of extra inning games but uh, like you say you know, we got to go up there with our best A game to, put, to beat Montevallo. And the more you're in those situations, we talk about it all the time, uh, what we call holding your water, not letting the game get out of hand, not letting the other team put up a crooked number. We had a couple of innings like that today where, I, you know, I went out there and talked to the pitcher in the infield about, hey, let's just limit the damage right here and let's keep pitching. I mean, some of them ground balls going through the holes and all that, can't do anything about it. you got to keep executing your pitches and playing.
playing defense, and I thought our guys did that. But certainly, the more you're in situations, the more comfortable you get. Uh, you know, and, and you know, failing sometimes, like we did against Rollins early on, and lost a bunch of one nothing games and two one games. Uh, it learned, and you're either going to stand there and bleed, or you're going to fight back and figure out how to get it done. And this team is slowly doing that, and I'm very proud of them. Up next for the Argos, a trip up to Montevallo, so a road series in Gulf South Conference play. That starts April 1st, April Fool's Day on Friday with a single game, doubleheader on Saturday, April 2nd. The softball team also in action at home over the weekend. Auburn Montgomery was the team coming in. The Argos came in ranked 11th in the country. Auburn Montgomery came in ranked 14th in the nation. So a clash of top 15 teams in this one just did not go the way of the home team. It started off with Auburn Montgomery getting a win in game number one on Saturday in a double header. And the Argos just couldn't seem to get the bats going for really any kind of long stretch in this series. They were able to come back in game two on Saturday, tie it up, but then lose right at the bitter end of that one. And then Auburn Montgomery turns around on Sunday and sweeps the series with a big win on Sunday. The bats, really struggled Tila Howard with four hits in the series, but with the bats not providing the runs, that put a lot of pressure on the pitching. Softball falls to 18 and seven on the season, 12 and three in conference play, but that slides them to third in the conference standings. And there are some big series around the corner. We had a chance to talk to coach Ashley McLean before the Argos get back into action later this week. You know, I'm excited. We hit a adversity this weekend and we got pushed a little bit harder than we've gotten pushed this year. And we're working on bouncing back and we get to go play Columbus State before we play conference again. So I'm excited to see how these girls are going to overcome what happened this last weekend and continue to fight for this season. It's just trust in the process. That's what we tell our kids, you know, working on themselves and trusting what they're supposed to be doing and what their role is on the team. And I think if people can calm themselves down again and not get so riled up in those moments, then we'll be just fine. Tila Howard, you know, she's just a special player and we're very fortunate to have her on our roster. And um, she's stepping up big time in the leadership role on the field. Maddie Vasquez being a transfer has done really well for us. Kelsey Sweat's doing well. Um, Kayla Mayo, who was behind Mika Garcia for two years, has stepped up and really um, filled her role in to play in the middle infield. So it's exciting to see these kids grow and all of them are growing throughout and trying to learn each other and trust each other and work on the process. The expectation from Columbus State, you know, they have one of the top pitchers in the country and I'm excited to see what we're going to do off of her and uh, he always has a very strong team so to get up there and play a midweek game on the road is always tough but I'm excited to get back on the field and overcome what we did this weekend and then uh, head to Montevallo to play a very scrappy team. They got a new coach and they're, they're pulling a lot of games this year so I'm excited to play them. Softball hits the road on Wednesday this week. They'll go up to Columbus State up in Georgia to play a doubleheader on the 30th. And then they are also at Montevallo this weekend along with baseball. Their series, though, will be Saturday, Sunday. So doubleheader on the second, single game on the third as softball gets, looks to get back to winning ways. Real change occurs in that split second a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose. A shared vision. And a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. Hello, I'm Zach Pullman. I'm a graduate assistant here at the University of West Florida and I work in athletic communications. What makes me passionate about my role here working in athletics at UWF is just getting to work with the coaches and the players and being able to highlight their accomplishments on and off the court. When I found out that I received the Bright Future Scholarship, I was very excited. I knew this would take a burden off of my family and kind of help me through college. And I knew it would give me plenty of opportunities down the road. One of my proudest achievements is graduating with my undergraduate degree here from the University of West Florida debt-free with a degree in sports management and then continuing my education by being accepted into the communications department here at the university.
If I had not received the Bright Future Scholarship, I would not be in the position I am today. Given the opportunity to pay for my complete undergraduate degree, I did not have to worry about student debt. So I was able to continue my journey of education and pursue a master's degree. Just want to thank the Florida Lottery for not only helping me through my college journey, but countless others in the state of Florida and all they do to help education within the state. Look at that. Your Whataburger made exactly the way you want it. Because sometimes, you gotta take matters into your own hands. What a burger, just like you like it. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Men's and women's tennis, it's always busy this time of year, week in and week out. Both teams with plenty of action last week, and it all started with a home match with Valdosta on campus here at the Ralph Skeeter Carson Tennis Complex. Valdosta ranked in the nation in both men's and women's tennis, and the men and women from UWF got kind of upset wins at home. They were both big wins for both Teams And then the men were able to go out and also beat Washita Baptist the next day. The women, after beating Valdosta, had a little bit of time off. Both teams went up to Valdosta, Georgia, to play kind of in a, in a tournament scenario. Big matches against Lynn and Columbus State. Columbus State, by the way, on the men's side, ranked number one in the country. Both the men's and women's programs unable to beat Lynn or Columbus State. Some tough matches up there against some really good competition. The men are now 12 and four on the season. The women fall to eight and seven overall. Both will be hosting Christian Brothers. That's coming up on Saturday the 2nd. So that's a big Gulf South Conference match right here at the tennis complex. And then the men have Mississippi College on the third. The women will have the University of West Georgia on Sunday. So come on out, check out some tennis this weekend. It should be entertaining, if nothing else. And men's and women's golf, they've been on the road all season, more or less, and now is the opportunity. We've got the home matches coming up here. Those are coming up on the 4th and 5th of April. The men will be playing their Argo Invitational at Pensacola Country Club. The women host their version of it over at Tiger Point in Gulf Breeze, so right here in the area. Great opportunity for Argo golf fans to come out and check that out. We had a chance to catch coach Kristen Dorsey before the Argos get ready to host that tournament. You know, this is our fourth tournament this spring, and uh, we've taken some time in between events to really work on our golf games and get them ready for the next event. So when we show up at that tournament, we're, you know, we're ready to put our best golf out there. Uh, the team is excited to bring it home. Uh, we don't have to take those seven-hour van, uh, van rides to, an, uh, to a course that we don't know. We know Tiger Point. It's a beautiful course, very challenging. And, you know, I think our home course advantage is just knowing that it's challenging, knowing that the wind, wind is out there. But uh, each girl, uh, like I said, we've taken a couple weeks between each event, and they've really been working on improving their games. So I'm excited to see what they got. As we were planning our schedule this, this year, we were kind of putting in mind trying to peak uh, you know, golf is a game of peaks and valleys, and we are hoping that around this time our golf games are starting to peak. And, and I think that we started to see that happening in our last tournament in Destin. Even though the final day was a wash, we were, as a group, probably leading the field that day in scoring. So as a coach, that's exciting to see the girls' games starting to come together. Tiger Point is just going to be a mental challenge. It's going to be a great opportunity for the girls to, uh, you know, start getting mentally prepared for a conference and you know, putting the pressure on on, on scoring. So um, that's kind of where we're at right now in our spring. We're, we're working up the mountain, hoping we're, we'll peak at the right time. That'll do it for another edition of Argo Sports Insider. As always, remember, GoArgos.com is your spot for all the latest news. We've got your schedules on there, results. You can dive into the box scores and find other features and fun facts on the University of West Florida's athletic programs. The Argo Armada app is right there on your phone and your tablet as well. You can download those from the Apple Store or from the Google Play Store. 
You can get connected to social media, keep up with your favorite teams and players and all that kind of good stuff. And as always, we'll see you next time on Argo Sports Insider. Go Argos!